reporting on the games you love by people who love to game. The MMO Reporter Network. You're logging into your favorite game, grinding out some gear. A couple of points added to your stats, and you have a virtual beer. Max level is pretty cool, but I'll remind you here, my friend. These games are not about the goal, it's about the journey and not the end. You're listening to MMO Reporter on the MMO Reporter Network, brought to you by Doghouse Systems. Choose your weapons with Doghouse Systems. Audible, find your next great read at audibletrial.com slash MMO Reporter. And by GoDaddy, put your website to work while you play. Forget about your alts you need to cherish Each and every little character you've got No matter what level they're at Don't forget about your alts you need to cherish Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of MMO Reporter. This is episode 195. I'm Chris, and as always, I am joined by the pantless wonder, the master of minions, that guy who kicked Steve off the podcast tonight, Mr. Leonor himself. Hello, Leonor. Hello, minions. I'm glad he kept my chair warm for a little while, but enough is enough. I thought he was a little gassy tonight. (laughs) Uh, And, of course, the one, the only... At MMO Bill. Hello, Bill. Hello, Chris. And of one course, and only, there is only one. The man with no discernible accent of many voices, star of stage and screen, and keeper of time and stopwatches, Mr. Harry Hall. Now I'm forced to do a voice. <laughs> I don't want to do a voice. No, I sound like a goblin. <laughs> I don't know what you sound like. To be blunt. See, I, my my uh, first. little character. My first take was uh, eighty-year-old Grump, but yeah. uh, <laughs> he just needed to say "yep, yep, yep," and we were set. I could see I Goblin. Get... It's I, I'm I'm playing World of Warcraft, so Goblin, sorry. Right now, log of off, my... Harry. Log off right now. <sighs> anyway, hi. I, you had problems with Eve last time. <laughs> you missed a cue because you were playing Eve. Thank you very much. I'm, I might be playing Eve right now. Well, yeah, but I mean. Everybody looks at spreadsheets when they're playing, when they're podcasting, right? The joke is getting so old. It's yeah, about but... as old as Eve. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking but... about the biblical Eve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but Harry, is it any less true? It is It is very much not true. Uh-huh. E- okay. <sighs> nope, we're not going there. We're not going there. Not yet. You're, you, you're... you went there. Yeah, yeah, but now I'm going to move on. <laughs> Lenor, what have you been doing in game lately? <laughs> It's I'm the argument ender, huh? That's right. <laughs> um, game. Show title. <laughs> <laughs> I've been working on uh, some new episodes of Plus One Keyboard for a Secret World. Uh, my buddy has been free lately, so we've been doing some more episodes and uh, nice. hoping to get those out on the uh, on the YouTubes pretty soon. Um. I didn't do any PvP in Lotro, and I whoa, actually whoa, didn't do stop, very whoa. much Lotro. Wait, hold on. What? You didn't do PvP in Lotro? Unless running off the steps and throwing one spear at a spider and then running back to go buy my my bear counts. Does that count? That counts. That counts okay, yeah. I did PvP this okay. week. Okay. <laughs> whoa. I was worried there for a while. I feel better now. One of the seven signs, yeah. <laughs> so I bought the beer class. Um, I don't. I didn't play it yet, or I, you know, I didn't make it yet. Um, I, I did play it on beta. It was kind of neat. Uh, I didn't get very far though because the class wasn't very complete at that time. So I'm kind of curious to see uh, how this class works out because right now, even on live, uh, the Bioring isn't very complete. Um, I guess there's issues with armor and stuff, so we'll, we'll see what happens. How can it be happens. launched if it's not complete? Like, not, I'm I'm totally out of the loop on on Lotro right now. Nope. I've been focusing on other stuff. How can hang you on, release Chris. a game, a, a class that's not done? I, hang on, Chris. Are are you new to MMOs? Is this your first day? <laughs> 
<laughs> no, but seriously, it's it's Burn. it's the 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 casual nature with which you you mention that, Lenor. It, it kind of astound. Oh yeah, it's just not done. So I'm gonna go off and do it. No, if it's not done, you gotta raise hell. That's not okay. Yeah, I don't know if it's just they need more playtesting on live servers to actually iron it out, but I know rune keepers were pretty useless when Moria came out for quite a while. So I'm kind of comparing it to that. So is it just that they need to tweak the class, or are there actual parts missing? Uh, they need to tweak it. Uh, there is, people have been telling me things about there is armor issues. I don't know if it's stats or just like cosmetic stuff. I would think it's stats, though. So I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm kind of learning about it as it comes in. This was just, uh, uh, they, let's see, it was released about a week ago, and they hot-fixed it just this morning, I think, unless it was yesterday. Okay. But yeah, yeah, that's, there's stuff coming in. Oh, no, it was this morning. That's right. So yeah. Um, got into Orcs Must Die 2 for a little while. Uh, oh, a friend fun. of mine just got a really nice computer, and uh, he wanted to try it because his computer still was running Windows 98. Oh, what? So <laughs> he oh had a God. computer, and he was like, wow, the graphics on this game are awesome. I'm like, yeah, you haven't seen any games in a while, have you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, imagine going from the Windows 98 era of gaming immediately to the 21st century. That's, that, that's a shock. Wow! I'm just stunned. I mean, your 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 comment about Chris's joke about Eve being older than the <laughs> biblical Eve. Well, that's still newer than this dude's computer. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, this guy. This guy was playing like um, the original Fantasy Star and um, Final Fantasy XI at low settings on his computer for like the longest time. Wow! Oh man. Everybody was well, silent for a second. <laughs> I, I, oh, I'm just, I'm secret. It's the secret relief coming from the inside of me, knowing that there's at least one less Windows 98 computer out there. That, that just. Okay. 98 wasn't that bad, though. I mean, we're not talking ME here. It was not bad in 1998. <laughs> I think I had it in 15, 1999. It was okay. 15 years ago, Chris. Oh, God, world. Okay. Yeah. Wow. It was before World of Warcraft was in development. That's not true. We saw a documentary. Never mind. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I've been playing a lot of XCOM. Uh, I started over, though, because I actually learned how to play the game and, and <laughs> what to research and everything. So I was like, okay, I'm going to get all my countries back. <laughs> so I started over, and now I have all my countries and they're all funding me, so that's great. I have a big, huge cash coming in, and nice. uh, that's looking really good. And then the same guy that we were talking about uh, a minute ago, he has been going Steam crazy and uh, going through all the games that are on it, and he found this uh, MMO called Dragon's Nest. Um, I, I don't know much about it, but I have it installed, and we're going to play it soon, so I'm, I'm hoping to talk about that. Wow. Later later next week, next show, cool. something like that. And that's pretty much what I've been doing. Bill, what have you been doing? Well, predictably, I played Guild Wars 2. Uh, nothing even serious, too. Like the, the, the new uh, or the season two story has actually been reestablished or started again, starting on uh, November 4th. And I di haven't even touched it yet. I'm all just screwing around doing hearts it's just fun like it's it's the, the I, it's just barely actiony enough to be engaging and interesting but it's not so actiony that i can't just shut my brain off and play for a while you know it's mm. it, it, it it hits that nice middle ground for me so still still really love guild wars 2 and we're going to touch on that towards the end of the show when we talk about our email um i got my thrustmaster and uh, I've been so enjoying that. Now, <clears throat> little story. I, I just uh, this is the only context where nobody even bats an eye when I say that. At work, I said that several, uh, and at least one person did a complete double take, rounded back on my desk, and said, "Excuse me," talking about my thrustmaster. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's what I just thought of when you said it. <laughs> oh, okay. 
Actually, no. We okay, but I want to know how it is when you play Elite Dangerous with the flight stick. Oh, oh well, I yeah, I'll tell you about that too. So anyway, uh, I got my new flight stick, and uh, it's it's oh man, it's absolute heaven. I wow. playing Elite Dangerous with a with a three sixty controller compared to playing it on a proper flight stick is just two entirely different worlds. The game suddenly makes sense when you use the correct tools, believe it or not. <laughs> so if you are even just a little bit serious about getting into Elite Dangerous, if you think you're going to be buying it when it comes out on December 16th, hint, hint, it's coming out on December 16th, uh, get yourself even just a basic flight stick. Uh, it, it's you don't have to necessarily get the top of the top end, but just the movement and the 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 navigation and the and the and the dog fighting ability is I, I, I it's at least twice as smooth and I'm not even exaggerating. I wish I could put a number on how smooth it is so that I could <laughs> prove that I'm not exaggerating when I say double, but it makes a huge difference. 17.6 five. Hmm. You got to break this down. Seventeen point six. Yes. So, with using the X, the, the Xbox controller, <laughs> no more than a six, really. I I will be receiving my Thrustmaster uh, sometime between November twelfth and November twenty fifth. Nice. See, What'd when you, you say it, it sounds dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Is it going to be in a plain Wait. brown box with no markings on it, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> Wrapped inconspicuously. Um, you know what? I can I can try that again if you want. I I I really can. All right, are you ready? But you want to try the Thrustmaster again? No, I can understand no, no. That. Here we go. I, I no, it's. Uh, I I can. It's, it's one of Chris' great times of sound right, effects. Right, exactly. So uh, queued up five minutes after the joke's gone. Please go ahead. Uh, oh. Don't mind us. All right, so uh, I'll be getting my Thrustmaster. Oh, the flight stick. Okay. Oh, you ruined it. Thanks a lot, <laughs> jerk. Uh, yeah, but mine's yeah. So I'm I'm looking forward to that too. So I understand, Bill, as I am anticipating its arrival. It, you're 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 anticipating it penetrating your residence. And being comfortable in his hand. I'm I'm so uncomfortable now. I can't okay. even describe it. <laughs> in, in all seriousness, what did you order, Chris? Thrustmaster. Thrustmaster. Yeah, I like that one. That's a good one. <laughs> uh, no, the... Um, uh, the I'm leaving. Uh, this is not a clean podcast the anymore. Right. <laughs> Potas X-Flight stick. That one that oh, we were talking about. You... Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, right. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm yeah. excited anyway. for that. Looking forward anyway. to uh, buying that after I got some money to buy it. But continue, please do. Yes, continuing. Uh, so yes, I did actually play Elite Dangerous, infinitely better with the flight stick. Uh, I've been playing Shadows of Mordor, and I'm just finally starting to get a groove going in Shadows of Mordor. I've been in and out uh, of Shadows of Mordor. Uh, don't, please. Um, and uh, I'm just now getting the attack patterns and special abilities and the finishing moves and that starting to get figured out. So enjoying that quite a bit more. Uh, I've also learned about the magic of fast travel. I've had, the, I had the game now for what, like three weeks or four <laughs> weeks or something <laughs> like that. I'm just now getting fast travel between the, the, the towers. So. Wow. That was almost timely. Well played. Shut up. Yeah. It's <laughs> impressive. You'll suck. Uh, this like, is show then... 195. <laughs> I mean, I, a couple of, uh, well, 30, 40 shows more and we have timing. Okay, let's go. <laughs> no. You, uh, wow, you lost nice, it, Chris. Nice chop at the end. Anyway, uh, <laughs> also played... Hearthstone, jump, uh, jumping back in there. I, I'm kind of in a weird spot with World of Warcraft. You notice it's not on my play. In dead zone going on. And I, I think I talked about it a little bit last week as well. So uh, to fill that void, I played Hearthstone. And I like it. I'm also a little bit excited that uh, it looks like Hearthstone is going to be coming to Android pretty soon. So it's going to be entering my mobile milieu, if you will. So excited about that 
anyway, uh, that was pretty much my week. Uh, how about you, Harry? What have you got up to? I'm I'm happy to hear that Hearthstone is finally getting to Android because it's it's kind of unfair that such a great game is is stuck on one OS. It shouldn't mm-hmm. uh, mobile OS. So happy for older Android users. I've been playing World of Warcraft because I'm um, uh, preparing to review the new expansion, Warlords of Draenor. Um, it sounds like an excuse to play the game, and it is because I'm having a lot of fun. <laughs> Um, then why do you need an excuse? Why can't you just play the game? Because I, as you might remember, had a uh, firm belief that playing MMOs is, is counterproductive. I didn't think it was every... a belief so much as a truth. I, as I've said before, I mean, I, I used to ma- make the joke that if I didn't play MMOs, I would have written three more books, and suddenly I realized it wasn't so much a joke as a cry for help. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that was good, actually. <laughs> God damn it, that was good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm here all night. Take your waitresses. Um, <laughs> um, okay, I'm. Um, I've done the. Um, I, I'm. I'm very sorry to to say that I've actually been stubborn and and rolled a mage and leveled him up to ninety rather than the. I, my, I'll take through my reasoning. I decided that I didn't want the pressure of World of Warcraft. I wanted to see the content. And I thought, what would be the easiest way to get into all the content without people blaming me for every bad thing that happens? <laughs> nah. And that would mean no tank, no heals. And I thought, if I'm going DPS, I might as well just go DPS. So I went for the, the whole Fire Mage setup. Um, People will probably tell me I'm wrong to choose fire, but I just like to see things burn. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so I, I've, I've, I did that, and I went through the quest. I, this is in the live game, right? This is not in the in the beta. So I went to the the blasted lands and did the quest line that I skipped in the beta. So now I have tons of skills, which is a <laughs> huge improvement <laughs> on your gameplay experience. Um, I did realize that playing is hard. I was amazed how many times I died in that that introductory quest line. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I must be doing it wrong or something. But th- the mobs were hard, and uh, after that, I mean, I, I I finished the quest line. I've got all my skills. I'm trying to figure out what the hell every one of them does. <clears throat> but I'm now questing in the regular world, trying to do the stuff that Blizzard recommends me doing, and that's just piss easy. Sorry, dead <laughs> easy. <laughs> Uh, be- because everything else seems to be tuned uh, for leveling. Well, if you're, I'm, if I'm doing now a level ninety or eighty nine quest, I just look at a mob and it dies. And apparently, those 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 introductory quests are actually tuned to the level of Warlords of Draenor, which makes me happy because that means that the actual expansion content will be maybe a little bit more uh, 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 challenging. When we're actually getting into the to the new world, so I'm looking forward to that. Done a couple of um, dungeon runs in WoW, and the same weird thing. I thought I'll just try to do some dungeons and I'll see what happens. I don't know these people. If I mess up, it doesn't matter. So I'm actually polite and entering into the instance, <clears throat> saying, "Guys, this is my first run here. I'm a returning player. I got this new level 90. I don't know what the crap I'm doing." People, oh, that's okay. <clears throat> so we're running through those dungeons. It's completely easy. I, I, I don't even need to be there, it feels like. Everything just dies around us. We reach the end of the boss. I get an achievement. It turns out it was the heroic version of the dungeon. <laughs> oh. <laughs> huh, I was I, I was complete because we went to Scholomancy and I it's it's I like that dungeon, by the way. It's one of those classic dungeon-y dungeons. <laughs> it's, it's really... Uh, Almost textbook dungeon design. Well, I really it, like that. I one. do like my dungeons dungeony. Well, you you have the gimmicky ones. You know, you have the ones that are outside. You have the ones that have have colorful, Pandarian designs. Scholomancy is one of those actual classic, Dungeon Dragons dungeons. Yeah. Okay. With, with the castle and the and the walls and the yeah. torches and the. So, but the fact that the, that I didn't realize I was doing a heroic dun- I I dreaded the moment that I would actually queue up for an heroic dungeon. I thought, oh my god, I will never be able to... I am not prepared. Turns ah. out I was. <laughs> Good. I'm so, glad you're uh, prepared, Harry. 
so my World of Warcraft experience so far is actually pretty good. I'm just now realizing that uh, at level 90, this is very weird. I, I'm entering the game at level cap to find out there's not, there's no end game. <laughs> 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 I'm one of those guys. I got all the way to level 90. There's no end game. No. <laughs> hmm. Well, I, I, I'm actually wondering about the raid finder. Bill, did you have any experience with that? You were doing actually bug raids. I have never done the raid finder myself. I have talked to a couple of friends that have used it, and they say it's typically not a problem. It's, it's similar to what you described with the dungeon there. Most people are actually pretty good. Uh, the, the raid will go a little bit slower than, say, a guild raid or something like that. But uh, most people are pretty reasonable. They're, you'll get booted from time to time from people who are just looking for experts, obviously. But that's, that's the exception rather than the rule by a long I'll shot, apparently. I'll, I'll give that a try then this afternoon because I was... I'm I'm amazed, and this is a good thing. Blizzard seems to be trying to make this game playable for everyone. Mm -hmm. And if I can actually get into a dungeon with a character that I've been playing for three hours at level 90 and don't know what the hell I'm doing, and I'm actually mo uh, medium effective, that means that everybody can play this game. And I'm really looking forward to the new expansion content and the dungeons and everything that comes with it. Because I feel I can actually participate. And that's great. Mm -hmm. So that's my World of Warcraft experience. I'm basically very happy with the whole thing and happy with the level 90 character. Uh, played Hearthstone a little bit. I had to because I saw the video from Overwatch. And then you just have to play Hearthstone. Ah, <laughs> I was going to mention that when we watched that. We'll talk about that in a bit. Yeah, we'll talk about it. And I uh, played Eve. <clears throat> um, the, the, the predictions became true. Now you have this level, uh, this um, skill system that you can queue up your skills and you don't have the 24 hour limit anymore. So you right. can just queue up months of skills in advance. That's what we talked about last uh, week, right? Yes, yeah. that's the right. that's the new uh, monthly expansion that they did. Mm -hmm. uh, the net to, the net effect for me was that I actually did this and forgot about Eve again. So I logged in to put in some skills for a couple of weeks or a couple of days. Uh, usually, uh, I can queue up a skill and then one for three days or four days or, or longer. And I log in and I refresh, and now I just put in for about a month, and I haven't logged in since. <laughs> so I'm actually playing and not playing. So now I understand your playing Eve comment and not staring at spreadsheets. You're not staring at spreadsheets because you're not playing the game. Finally, I played Beyond Earth, <laughs> uh, the new Civilization game. Um, Ooh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you were taking well, that first... bullet for me, weren't you? Yes, I have taken that bullet, and I must say the multiplayer was a huge disappointment. Oh. Because it is it is bugged to the point that it, it is really unplayable, actually oh. unplayable, not not the metaphorical unplayable. You cannot play it. Uh, <laughs> two friends, uh, I, I, I us we have this this regular Civilization Five group that we're playing multiplayer with. So we were very excited about getting into Beyond Earth. We're like, oh my God, we got this new game. We're gonna go learn all the new rules. See what happens. So we start playing before BlizzCon's opening ceremony, and we had this deal like, okay, we're gonna play. Then we we'll watch the opening ceremony, and after that, we're gonna con continue playing and finish our session for tonight. So we play the first 45 minutes. We're actually okay. I mean, it's like Civilization. You're just trying to figure out how everything works. We quit the game, we get back into the game, and it crashes on loading. And this apparently is a real bug that if you play multiplayer and load your saved game, the game will crash for the people who are not hosting the game. Oh. So that means no Beyond Earth multiplayer. Mm, and that yeah. sucks because we were looking forward to that. I played a bit of the single player because I'm reviewing it as we speak. And it is a... Uh, um, it is a very uh, similar experience to Civilization when you first start, but there are so many little uh, additions and, 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 and tweaks that make it, it, it its own game. One of the big things that I've noticed in the first 100 turns is that quests play a big part. And they help you to uh, direct your gameplay experience. Rather than just have a city-state asking you for something and calling it a quest, you have a quest log that helps you to uh, direct your uh, strategy. 
so you you get a quest once you find for example a resource pod then you get a quest to find two more so you know it is a good thing to do because there's a quest helping you to do these things so all these little uh, assignments that you get uh, from the game help you to get your f get get solid footing in the game it's, it's a very good system uh, the tech tree is completely different i'm not going to go into any detail on that but it is a the more you take the time to see what it is it this it's it stops being a Civilization V upgrade and it becomes its own game. So I'm having a lot of fun with it. Okay, good. Awesome. That That's what I've been playing. Uh, so, Chris, you're left uh, with uh, the final bit of this section. Mm -hmm. well, what have you been doing? Uh, Rift has been my main game. I've been traveling a bit this weekend and... Uh, I was uh, I was I was at a hotel. I didn't play in my hotel room for a little bit uh, on Rift, um, but I did finally get the get a code for the expansion pack and and got all that. I'm still torn because I understand that um, uh, uh, that Tryon Worlds needs to make money, but I'm torn on the way that they're monetizing this particular expansion, which is that pretty much all the content is free. When you when you go into the well, not pretty much all of the content is free. When you go into it, you don't have to pay anything. Um, super easily accessible, but they have item slots that are are you have to buy the expansion to get attuned to water to be able to wear certain gear that is uh, attuned to that. So that's for all the slots, and then they have specific to the expansion unlock slots, uh, earrings, I think it is. Um, and so it's it's limiting a little bit what your character can become and the power of your character. So having the expansion unlocked, all that stuff, which is nice for me, but I still don't know about the monetization scheme uh, if they're going to call it free to play. But they got to make money somehow. That's where I sort of I I I um, I hesitate because well I, I I love the game. I want them to make money and keep going. Is this an okay way for them to do it? I, I don't know. Um, what do you guys think of sort of what I've described so far? Bill? I mean, you've played Rift quite a bit. Um, it's Right, you're difficult. hesitating too, right? I, I mean, yeah, it, it's... Because I'm kind of of two minds of it. Because, uh, I mean, an expansion should be a little bit of a reset for the game and it should there should be some expectations that uh, your character is going to need to make some changes like gear changes attunement changes that kind of thing the flip side though is that your your character that you've poured hours and everything into and customizing and everything like that it's it's always it's there's i don't know I it there's a there's a balance in there and some games do it really well some games do it really poorly in how to kind of graduate your existing character into a new expansion and I I I I, I, I really have to think about it you know yeah and and it, it's uh it's not just cosmetic stuff it's actual stuff that makes your character better yeah right so that's that's my hesitation yeah because I mean if you think about it I mean World of Warcraft for example again I. Usual caveat, I hate you comparing everything to World of Warcraft, but honestly, we've got a new WoW expansion coming out right now. That's a complete gear reset, and they're not even, they don't even hide it. The greens that you're getting in the first five minutes that you're playing yes. the new expansion <laughs> are going to replace the raid gear that you spent right. dozens to hundreds of hours accruing in the last expansion. But you have to pay so, for it. The yeah. expansion, yeah, but not for the gear. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you pay for the opportunity to do a complete reset on your character. So what do you think, Harry? <laughs> I, I have an excuse for not paying attention. I just got an email from a publisher who wants to read my new book. Nice. So I was kind of, I was that's, kind of distracted. That's worth it. Just... What I'm talking about is the fact that Rift is, uh, the, expan the content for the expansion is free. Quests, dungeons, all that yeah. sort of stuff. But they've limited... Um, some of the gear that you can get for a whole bunch of different slots, not just specific slots, are uh, locked behind this uh, uh, attuned to the plane of water thing that you only get through buying the expansion. There's also a couple of new gear slots, earrings, that you only get through getting the expansion. And my worry, it, it feels a little bit like pay to win when the power of your character is limited by whether or not you bought the expansion. That being said, in WoW, the power of your character is limited by not buying the expansion because you can't level. So where is that balance? 
Well, my, my main question is uh, if you don't, because I, I found what I did gather is that you can just enter the expansion content without paying for it. Correct, yes. Right, so you can you can basically do, uh, you can try it on your own, but you can't get to the ultimate levels of awesome without paying for it. Correct. I don't think that is such a bad thing to do because what, what they're basically saying is you can sample the expansion. If you like the areas and you want to get take adva full advantage of it, you pay for it. Right. As long as you don't have to pay for individual item slots, then I wouldn't have a problem with it. If you pay for the expansion and everything is unlocked from that moment on in the entire gear uh, treadmill, let's put Sorry for that yeah. negative word. I don't see a big problem with it. I, I can understand it feels differently, but it's right. not really. It's basically yeah. getting a sample of the areas before buying. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's a really great way to think about it. Lenor, any anything to add or kind of... I, I, it seems kind of strange that you would be able to go through the expansion. Basically, um, what, what my train of thinking is... A lot of casuals will go through there and not even bother buying the gear. Right. Yep. They'll just kind of go in and adventure, and then when they're done, they're basically done and, right. and work on another character or something like that. So it's kind of strange that the the way that it's set up. So I don't know. It, it's weird. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that being said, the content is fantastic, and I'm really enjoying playing it. Um, I'm going to have to drag myself away when Warlords of Draenor launches. Uh, I've been playing some Marvel Heroes as well. Still have not gotten to play Juggernaut yet, although that, uh, that's down the road here. And, of course, Shadows of Mordor continuing that. I, I feel like I'm so far into the game, and, and I've only got, like, 35% completion. <laughs> but I feel oh, like I'm so far. And sometimes it feels really cheesy the way I'm I'm fighting some of the, the basic Rooks, but then you got to think, I'm, I'm supposed to be uber-powerful now, so... Yeah, it's supposed to be kind of cheesy. I'm supposed to kill everything. And then I, f I fight a, a, a captain or a warlord with, like, 20 power. And I'm like, oh, crap, that. Thank you very much uh, for handing my butt to me uh, so succinctly. That was very, very clear. And then I get, yeah, it's painful. Mm -hmm. It hurts. Uh, all right. Uh, just want to mention to everyone out there before we move on to the news that uh, we'd love to see your reviews on iTunes, if you wouldn't mind. So uh, go check out iTunes, leave us a review. And if you do it on anything but sort of the Canadian and American uh, iTunes stores, let me know so that I can look it up on uh, those different stores. All right. Time to move on to the news. <laughs> You would expect that Blizzard, uh, Blizzard's BlizzCon would be kind of a downer after they cancel one of their most anticipated titles ever, the unannounced but uh, unceremoniously canceled Titan. But they had a great presentation. I had a virtual ticket for BlizzCon, so I've, 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 I've seen a lot of the panels. And the biggest reveal at BlizzCon, obviously, was their new game, their their kind of first-person shooter MOBA-type experience, Overwatch, which had a great, awesome anime uh, uh, Pixar-style uh, cinematic. And there was one particular highlight in this awesome superhero battle, and I'm pretty sure everyone agrees with me, and that's the security guard. Yep. Am I right? <laughs> I, yeah. Pretty much, yeah. That was that was awesome. <laughs> it just it was, it just I don't. Know. It was cheeky, but I lulled. I don't lull Basically, very often, and usually when I do, I actually make it an acronym. So <laughs> I actually I actually ruffled, but um, it's, <laughs> you held a raffle. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, you Canadians, you. Um, for if you haven't seen it, you best, but you really should because it's it's a it's a great cinematic that gives you a flavor of the atmosphere of the game, not of actually gameplay. That doesn't matter. There's this this big battle in the museum between superhero type characters, and at a certain point, halfway through the trailer, the the the, the trailer cuts to the security guard sitting with his back to the security monitors, playing Hearthstone on a tablet. I'm it's looking just for it now. I can't find it. <clears throat> 
It's just this Pixar moment. The timing is you can learn from that, Chris. Timing is everything in, in comedy. <laughs> so it's it's really an awesome bit of Sorry, of what did you joy. say? What what did you say, Harry? What 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 was that? Oh, what timing? Oh, whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've actually seen the uh, gameplay. Uh, there, there, there was a panel on uh, several panels on Overwatch, and on one of them they showed a complete match of the game. Have you seen that as well? Uh, I did not see the complete match. I did see the gameplay sort of teaser thing that they put out uh, that introduced the characters. They had a fantastic uh, presentation where Blizzard employees obviously played the game, and they had two other Blizzard employees who weren't professional announcers do a, a play-by-play commentary during their uh, their match, and it gave a very good uh, uh, idea of what the game is actually about. You have these different hero characters, and all of them have a very unique set of powers. It's it's not like Call of Duty that everybody's basically a soldier with kind of different perks. You, we are talking MOBA-style differences. So you have mm-hmm. this this turret class. You have this this builder. You have actual uh, you heavy have assault. Several turret classes. Right, yeah. and they all look different. I mean, you can't say how they feel because we haven't played it, but, but that's I, this is the first shooter that I feel actually might get the whole MOBA esque, um, different different characters scheme of of selling them right, and and that sort of gameplay down the road, um, it really feels that way with the heroes. Yeah, exactly, and it, it, and and you, it, it is a, and this is a great, great, great decision. Every match is objective based, so there is no death match. You have these maps, and most of the, uh, and all of them, uh, uh, are about, uh, for example, capturing something or protecting something that has to travel through the map. Uh, so there's there is no uh, everybody kills everybody inside. You have to uh, work together and strategize because otherwise you won't be effective. An objective based match really hinges on teamwork and not on just sitting somewhere and camping and spawn killing. So everything they're doing with this shooter is is geared towards having an optimal experience. One of the great things that I that nobody has done this right so far, but they. They make a point of creating support classes that are not about the kills, that are that, that can defend themselves a little bit, but are about pure healing or pure support. Yeah. And I think that's a wonderful idea. I would love to play a support character in a shooter if that is a full role rather than somebody who just has to run behind the tank. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. no medic, right? <laughs> well, right. Make it- it gets back to kind of the 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 core that I've always I've, I've always thought that they they should have tried to pull out of World of Warcraft because I mean everybody always complained about how they had to chew through all kinds of like lore content and PVE and that kind of thing when all they really wanted to do was just pure elite difficult challenging uh, group based events. So I mean it almost feels like this that's kind of what they're selling here that if if you're going to be an optimal group you've got to be you've got to have a heavy you've got to have a healer and you have to work as a team and you can't just march off into different directions and this it feels like this is the the kind of that that hardcore nugget that they've been trying to pull out of uh, World of Warcraft and other games for a long time. Um, yeah. Yes, and, I just and, said pulling out a nugget. I heard that titter. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually uh, was. Okay, I'll get this image out of my mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> some of the classes are just wickedly original and fun. Just to, there's this one. There's, there's two women classes. I mean, I'm, the characters are women. I'm, 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 I don't know the name, so I'm sorry I can't differentiate them any more than that. One of them is a kind of a turret class that that can put up turrets everywhere around her, and I, I love the look of that. And I thought I want to play her. Oh, that's and then, Sarah, right? Right. No, then Symmetra. Was, Symmetra. Sorry. Symmetra. Yeah, that's her. Then there was a second uh, character, and I thought I have to be her, and that's the time travel one. And I thought, this is amazing. This is a character that can teleport, so she can jump from place to place, and there is a very short cooldown, so you can just hop all over the map no, it, almost without any restraint. But on top of that, you have this, this 
time reversal right. skill. You can basically run forward and press the button, and your time will rewind we're watching for about her right three now. seconds. Yeah, we're watching her on and the that, live stream here. Yeah, but not everybody is watching the live stream, so I have this this, yes. I have this to rock. It's great radio. <laughs> if you saw the live stream, you knew exactly, exactly. what Harry was talking about. Yes. So if you press this button, you rewind, you, you, you teleport back to the point you were three seconds ago, and you regain some health. So what you basically do is you run towards your enemy, pump them full of bullets, and then push, push the rewind button. And your damage will be negated, and you will actually be back in cover. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, you can imagine the, the uses of that, too, where you get yourself strategically somewhere behind cover, run, 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 and then boom, hit it, and you're back, like, literally behind something, under cover, something like that, not just, you know, a random spot three seconds ago. So I could exactly. see that well, being used very strategically. Well, not to mention just the whole redo thing where you could instantly say to yourself, geez, I wish I didn't do that. Yeah, well, was it Prince of Persia did yeah. that, Sands of Time? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I'm. I'm really excited about this. There's. Um. I haven't been this excited about a shooter. I. I really like Titanfall. I. I played that. Uh. Quite a bit. Um. But I wasn't as excited about it, even with the mechs, which are awesome. Uh. I. I think I'm more excited about this one because it does touch that MOBA MMO ish itch more than I think any other shooter has before it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and I, this is going to be. I, I'm, I'm not sure. I've not, not seen anything about the the business model, but I I would be uh, absolutely amazed if this wasn't free to play with a option to buy different classes. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. That's yeah what just it be. as a, I'm a, sure. It it smells very much of Team Fortress Two, and uh, I mean Team Fortress Two doesn't sell additional classes, but they do sell hats. And hey, hey, Bill, the chat room's wondering how much they took from Titan for this game. Oh. Well, uh, I have it on very good authority from an article over on Eurogamer that Overwatch is actually it's it's its own, it's its own game as uh, as stated by uh, the the game's director Jeff Kaplan. He said uh, that this Bill, is a, a, its own. It, it, oh, oh yes, Harry. Sorry. I, I have it from actually from Polygon that one of the main Blizzard employees, Mr. Chris Madsen, basically states that this game has been has been reusing bits of. of, of Titan. So yep, but it you're was, wrong, they, sir. It, it's its own but, game. They they no, just no. It's it's Titan. It's but it's Overwatch. They they only made Overwatch. They didn't they didn't. This this has nothing to do with Titan. Yeah, Jeff Kaplan. Okay, says. let's explain. Okay, because uh, <laughs> w w what Bill expertly set up was this little uh, th the same difference thing. You have Eurogamer who has, is qu quoting uh, Jeff Kaplan saying uh, it's his own game, but uh, obviously we use gameplay ideas from other games and we, we are not creating games in a vacuum. Well, Chris Madsen says, well, we've actually taken some things from Titan. We've taken some maps and we've used some other things, but this is definitely not the same game that Titan was. What I think they're both trying to say is, or they're trying to avoid the image of Overwatch being a leftover game. Mm -hmm. They won't, don't want people to think they're reheating some uh, salvaged bits even though they obviously have taken some things from Titan to create this game, which is okay. I mean, if they find one bit that works and they bring that out as its standalone thing, there's nothing wrong with that. But they want to def they want to avoid the image of this being Titan light. This is, is the, my that, take on it. That half-eaten, reheated burrito from yesterday. <laughs> That's what Overwatch is <laughs> to Titan. With a new wrapper. Uh, yeah, Bill is okay. right. And, and, okay, I gotta go back to this though. Watching the the gameplay video, every time I see a new class, I say, "Oh, I gotta play that," and then, "Oh, I gotta play that one." Have you uh, seen the Reaper reload animation? Yes, it is so cool. He's not actually reloading after he's finished using his shotguns, his dual shotguns. He just throws them away, and pulls out new ones. Yes, <laughs> that is just cool. Yes. <laughs> Uh, anyways, it comes out tomorrow, right? No, that's early. Or I wanted, I thought I saw it was spring twenty fifteen. Is what they were looking at. It wouldn't I mean, surprise probably... me with the with the speed with which they went through alpha beta of Hearthstone. I mean, mm. well, but then again, this this they're still in technical alpha for uh for uh God 
What's the the oh, mobile Heroes thing? of the Storm. Oh, Heroes of yeah. the Storm. Yeah. I think it yeah. all depends on the type of. I mean, this is probably a more complex game to balance than Hearthstone. True. Mm -hmm. True. Well, yeah. So, anyway, so Overwatch, keep your eyes peeled for that. That's going to be very cool, even if it's not mm -hmm. technically an MMO. Um, a bunch of other stuff came out of uh, BlizzCon. Hearthstone is getting an expansion, uh, Gnomes versus Goblins, which is uh, going to be fun. Okay. Considering, oh, you 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 have to watch. Uh, the the you have to hear um, the uh, the gnomes versus goblins song uh, that comes out because it's amazing. Oh um, yeah, I heard that. Yeah. Uh, where is it here? I had it. <laughs> Gosh darn it! I totally had it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, you are really going wow, out wow. of your way to prove to me that your timing is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but while you hunt for that, Chris, I'd just like to mention, too, that I love that Blizzard has carried on with their tradition of not inserting any gnomes into cinematics and having no cinematic for the, the new Hearthstone expansion. That That's awesome. By the way, while, while Chris is, is, is trying to salvage what's left of his comedic timing, <laughs> I will just go into a, a little uh, side thing. You, I'm recommending everybody wa uh, watch the... World of Warcraft documentary that they've put out. It's free to watch. It's it's you just Google for it. It's everywhere. It's in the launcher of your World of Warcraft or your 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 Battle.net uh, launcher. It's a great one hour look at the history of World of Warcraft, how it's created, what the fans are saying about it. It's very self congratulatory, but then again, they're entitled because they've created something that is huge and it's a fun watch. So this this it's called Looking for Group. And it's a fun hour okay. to spend Are you with ready? Chris Madsen and friends. All right, here we go. Here we go. Goblins and gnomes. Goblins and gnomes. Both are super brilliant, but you would never know. Everything they seem to make is faulty or explode. I just think that, that's awesome. That's a musical I'm desperate to see. <laughs> it sounded actually crazily enough like Avenue Q. Yeah. Well, Avenue Q goes back to a whole lot of uh, Broadway tradition in its musical uh, cues. Yes, I'm um, a big musical buff, so I'm. <laughs> don't 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 get me started about musical theater, please. <laughs> So what Don't. are your thoughts on Wicked? Anyways, it's... moving on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you talked about the new card, right? 120 new cards, new minion type, a mech, and uh, they're going to make uh, goblins versus gnome specific card packs that you can get. But it doesn't look like they're going to have the adventures like they did with uh, Curse of Naxxramas. Anyways, Bill, what's next? Uh, they had a bunch of new uh, StarCraft to info the the whole protoss uh, campaign is coming out uh, the, the expansion is called legacy of the void they introduced another new cinematic for that there as well which again blizzard cinematics we got two brand new cinematics oh, out of this oh, blizzcon which uh, yum yeah that's all i really wanted to say about that uh they had a whole bunch of coverage for or i don't know about a whole bunch of coverage they had coverage for heroes of the storm uh which is going to be going into beta in january of 2015 uh harry you had the the uh the the blizzard pass uh did you did yeah. you see much heroes of the storm coverage <laughs> it's it's almost like fate is conspiring against me looking at that because i haven't i have oh. access to the technical of alpha I have not played it yet. I've installed it. I haven't gotten around to it. And I'm afraid that if I do, I will not stop playing. So maybe it's protecting myself. Mm. Because the idea of this is just so appealing, a Blizzard MOBA. Because mm. they do these things so well. So I'm afraid to. Well, wasn't the original Dota ripped out of Warcraft 3? Yeah, yeah. Correct. It was, a War it was a Warcraft 3 mod by the community. Yeah. Well, yeah. there you go. So full circle, right? Well, yeah. There you go. Um, it, it wasn't a Blizzard game back then, right? It was, it was something 
just yeah. ordinary folks cooked up and it ran, and all companies just, are running with it now. Just happened to run on a Blizzard engine. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. Back when you could mod those yeah. games. Mm -hmm. uh, also coming out of there was a, a, a funny quote from uh, Duncan Jones, the director for the new WoW movie. Uh, he wanted to – he kind of drew the comparison for uh, the movie – uh, as Avatar and Lord of the Rings at the same time. And that is a direct quote uh, for him talking about the I, – I believe the context of the conversation was basically the epicness of said WoW movie, which, I mean, it's it's good that he's keeping his goals realistic. I don't want him to uh, – <laughs> it, it would be a shame if expectations were set a little too high. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm, um, I am looking forward to it. Okay, move on. Yeah. Yep. Moving and on. Probably uh, lose yeah. out any Oscars to his wife's indie movie again. Ooh. Hmm. Okay, this is too obscure. Yeah. Avatar <laughs> lost out to his ex-wife who created the Hurt, who directed The Hurt Locker. Oh, that's funny. It's not, because if it was funny, you would make a ha-ha sound. Ha-ha. Yeah, there's, there's just, it's just ouchy, I guess. Anyway, uh, Diablo 3 is like one of the few games that didn't announce that it was getting an expansion, but they are going to be getting some new content and new zones. Uh, we'll have we'll have li uh, some links to this. PC Gamer actually had a really good summary page of all the coverage that they did for BlizzCon, all in one easy-to-digest spot. And they're actually one of the few outlets I found that actually did that. So uh, yay, PC Gamer. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Pretty much, They touched on just about all the Blizzard stuff there. Uh, or like all the all the properties, there was nothing that was kind of left out in the corner. Uh, if there was anything that was left out, I thought uh, it it seemed like uh, the the uh, Warlords of Draenor didn't get the hype that uh, everything else got there, which I thought was a little curious. Hmm. Hey, that, that that is a little curious, but uh, I think it's coming out like a little soon. Yeah. So. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, I, we we are going to, or we may lose Harry here to. Oh, I'm gonna say a secret spy mission here sometime in the next couple minutes. <laughs> oh, but damn I, it! Now I'll have to kill you and everybody who listen Ebola. to this podcast. Yeah. Okay, that's not funny. I'm <laughs> hanging <really> up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted to throw a quick question out. I'm going to throw it out to everybody, but uh, Harry, really quick. Uh, BlizzCon obviously covered a ton of different properties, including a couple of new ones in Overwatch and uh, Heroes of the Storm. Is this back, getting back to the level of production from Blizzard that we that we used to be able to expect from them now that Titan has been canned and it's not consuming resources into a terrible black hole that apparently every executive at Blizzard hated? Personally, I th the, the, the only thing I know is that I find it fa fantastic that a company with such a high profile with so much invested in, in, in this case Titan, has the courage to say it's not fun enough and we're not going to inflict this on other people. I wish there were more companies who had this this freedom to do that. We, yeah. we we see so many games that disappoint. Destiny comes to mind, oddly from the same <laughs> publisher. Hmm. <laughs> but it's it's if if they had the sense and the soul to uh, to, to 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 do this, you 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 know they are dedicated to creating something that everybody wants to play and has the absolute maximum fun with. Doesn't mean that I love every game that Blizzard makes, but I respect them more for it. I I hate I hate uh, uh, Starcraft, I with a passion. I I I hate it. I mm. cannot play that game. Really, just yeah, can't stand it. I just can't. Hmm. So it's it like you physically can't, as in the the game doesn't launch, kind of like uh, multiplayer in Beyond Earth, or it turns your stomach <laughs> to the point that uh, that it's. You, you, you're emotion can, you emotionally reject it. I, when I start playing StarCraft 2, I just get completely stressed out over it. I do not, I have, I'm not having fun with it. It expects too much of me. This is my fault probably. I'm not equipped to handle these kinds of... This, I just cannot play StarCraft 2. 
the single player is kind of I'm talking about the multiplayer and the single player is okay I guess because it's basically just doing missions in an RTS but the, the, the multiplayer StarCraft is just I I hate it hate it do you hate it that, though and with that upbeat <laughs> remark I'm going on my spy mission and assassinate uh Dun, dun, I'm, I mean, dun, dun, getting some dun, coffee. Dun, 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 Guys, have a good show. Okay, see you later. Have a good one, Harry. Bye, Harry. So, you know, with four people singing it, it's not necessary to play it. Not necessary, but awesome nonetheless. <laughs> uh all right um you know we're so oh go ahead i was just gonna say i was gonna throw the same question to you, to you chris and leonore like what what do you think of that like do you, is this do you think this is more of a pace of what we can expect from blizzard maybe seeing a couple of new things every year uh as opposed to the five years of kind of just quick rehashes and expansions mm. uh i i kind of think that they might be looking into a couple of new things here and there, but uh, and I don't want to say that you know this is just rehashing work that they had done with Titan and just stick it in a new game to make a new game just for the sake of not wasting uh, years of research on something. But I I I don't know. I I guess I can't really see them making anything else. But at the same time, I couldn't see them making a card game or a shooter. So I don't know. Uh, this is – it's a bit different. It's nice that they are branching out and doing newer things, though. I mean, Blizzard does have a quality when it comes to their games and, and making them ever so addicting. Well, I think that's that's sort of what I'm hoping for to come out of this is that uh, if uh, we if – they're, if they had all these resources that were tied up in uh, what – turned into essentially a black hole project that mm -hmm. maybe they're stepping out and they're going to look at some maybe some more bite-sized or more focused projects that they can put out there because I think in most cases a Blizzard game coming out is good for everybody because they either take an idea that's already out there and put a new set of polish on it or they have a tendency to even dive in and invent something a little bit new like something that we haven't really seen in other games before so it's my my secret hope is that now that Titan is gone, we'll see Blizzard getting back to being that top tier game developer that we knew for a decade before they started in on Titan. Well, it could be possible that they are picking up a lot of those Wildstar guys to make a uh, new farming sim mm. for Facebook with the Oculus Rift. Hmm. Oh, well, now I just got a little bit sick. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I, I I don't know. You said, can we expect this pace from Blizzard? I, if for one, I hope that they don't necessarily go this pace of a new game every sort of year or other year. Um, I, I hope that they focus more on developing the properties that they've got and adding a few, but... I don't know. I just one of the things that's so great about Blizzard is the polish and the amount of time yeah. and effort that they put on what they've got. And I worry about them uh, altering that company culture by spreading themselves too thin. Yeah, and because they're not a publisher here, they're a developer. There's that the the difference, right? You look at yeah. Activision. Activision is a publisher. They mm -hmm. publish all these games. They take care of the business marketing and distribution side of things mm -hmm. blizzard is a developer they make this shit. yeah and so well, and they've also gotten to the point where they can almost write themselves a blank check for blank check for developing this shit too because they there's very little that they make that doesn't turn into gold really fast except for titan Except for Titan. Well, and well, no. Let's. Uh, that's the other part of this too that I wanted to talk about too. Again, we've got a, a fairly successful BlizzCon that's come off to uh, new IPs, expansions for other IPs, um, and a couple of different. Uh, I mean, just in the articles that we've referenced here, uh, the the Jeff Kaplan and Chris Metzen articles, basically referencing 
uh, Titan as a really horrible experience, like something that was just uh, generally negative. Uh, is this another nail in the coffin for the the kind of mega or, or big ticket MMO? Like like we've it, is it just have has the, the genre kind of graduated to the point where you can't make the epic overarching uh, one MMO to rule them all type game anymore? Like, is it just too complicated? I, I don't think we're ever going to see a one game to rule them all. I don't think that that excludes seeing a game on the scope of WoW gameplay-wise, though. Uh, and I don't think that that genre, that type of game is completely out of the picture. Mm. I just think that Titan wasn't fun. And mm. they, they picked up on that and they re went back to the drawing board, back to basics a couple of different times and they couldn't get it to be fun. It wasn't that they didn't think they could make a successful product. It's that they couldn't make it fun. Well, and think about that though. Arguably the, the, the greatest game design minds on the planet and yes, big argument. I realize there's, there's tons of people just firing up the tweets right now, but uh, I mean, some of the, I, certainly among the best on the planet couldn't figure out how to turn this into something fun. Does, well, that, okay, mean, but... does that does that mean that the formula like you cannot build a mega MMO that may, maybe the 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 lightning in the bottle that World of Warcraft was was just they happened to make an MMO and then you maybe the the only way that you can make that mega MMO is to take something that's already built and then layer onto it and have the luck of everything no. going with you. I think that um, we know so little about Titan. It could have been built around a game mechanic, the entire game built around this game mechanic that in the end turned out to not be as much fun as they want. Maybe, you know, it was going to be running around capturing something, tulips, and they just couldn't make the tulip capturing fun. And because the entire game was built around it, they had to scrap it because they couldn't make that part fun. And they just, they had let themselves go so far to try and make it work because like you said, they've got the greatest design minds, but in the end, the core game mechanic just didn't work. That doesn't mm. mean that the genre doesn't work. It means that that game mechanic doesn't work. See, I, I, I agree. And technically you could be right, but I, to me that the body of evidence for this theory, because this is something that's kind of been bubbling in my mind for a while now, uh, Every serious stab at take at making that mega MMO has either just not quite met expectations to the other end of the scale of falling completely flat and failing. And it's making me wonder that is it even possible anymore? Can can you break in with an MMO anymore that doesn't uh, that that meets the the meets the criteria of being a blockbuster and not have it? miss on some level at least how's guild wars 2 doing for you bill it it's it is i mean i i i love it oh. I, I i love the game but uh it's it did it has it's fallen flat in a lot of areas the content creation for it is super slow they they their updates are are infrequent and relatively shallow the 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 gem store is turning into a bit of a burden on the game i mean there's problems with it i'm not going to try to paint guild wars 2 as as the as the perfect game because it's not and that again if anything else it's a, a game that i love still can't break into that blockbuster overall general appeal holy grail kind of thing makes me think that this is maybe this is just not something that publishers even want to chase anymore that maybe they've got to go after these more agile type of releases that uh, that focus on one or two really core concepts and then cross their fingers and hope that it gives them a platform that they can layer upon well i think that's a, a really 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 fantastic discussion I don't mm -hmm. think it's going to come to an end in this particular podcast. No, um, we will come back to it in future shows, though, because uh, this is a thing that's, that's <laughs> blossoming in my mind. Well, we continually come back to this sort of idea of are, are MMOs as a genre feasible to continue? But mm -hmm. uh, We do have a little bit of business to deal with first, though, before we get to, to our email. I want to mention our sponsor, GoDaddy. Uh, they have got... A couple of fantastic codes for us, MMO30, where you can get 30% off your 
purchase or MMO199 for a $1.99.com domain. You need to go check it out. They are fantastic. They've been our sponsors for a while now, but they have been our hosting providers for much, much longer. I do believe we're up to about five years now that they've been our hosting providers. So really happy with the service that they provide and really can recommend it to all of our listeners out there. Um, so thank you, GoDaddy, for sponsoring the show and the network. Uh, we want to talk about a couple of emails, first of all, from Minor Deviant here. Uh, first, thanks for the great podcast. I really enjoy the fact that each of you bring a different view, opinion on everything discussed and have lots of fun doing it. I know you have all tried many MMOs and continue to play a number of them. I've often wondered if you could only play each, only play two MMOs, which would they be and why? Keep up the great work. Always looking forward to the next episode. Thanks, Minor Deviant. Leonor, two MMOs. If you could only play two, go. Um, you geez. think. Bill, I go. Th Thank you. Well, geez, <laughs> would, it, would it be unfair to say Titan? <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> apparently Chris Metzen says that's like six games all in one. Oh, you see, I, I looked at this question and I, I, I th actually thought about it from two different angles like do it is it are we talking about just what's out there today like if i had to pick what i was going to do tomorrow and play it what would i pick if that was the case guild wars 2 would be one easy choice for me and the next one is really difficult because i think what i'd want is something new that i haven't really done before maybe maybe that would be Arcage. i don't know uh just for or Neverwinter actually is probably one. I'd, I'd probably go with Neverwinter. I'd probably want to take a serious stab at Neverwinter. There you go. All right, Leonor, go. Uh, I, if I could only play two, it would probably be two that are continuously adding on things and that are absolutely huge. So I would probably go over to World of Warcraft. And the second one, I, I agree with Bill, uh, something newish. Uh, I would probably go with Eve. Oh, cool. Mm, That's awesome. Interesting. Uh, as for me, Rift and Wildstar. That would be my two. Uh, all right, and from David here, his is a longer one, so I'm not going to read the whole thing. Uh, just going to read some highlights. Um, he was really happy to have the elite dangerous chat in the game and then he talks a little bit about uh, a suggestion for a flight stick the SciTech x52 pro uh so you can go check that out if you'd like um he also mentions a, a bit of software called voice attack that lets you do um voice commands and i wanted to mention this i remember getting voice commander when bridge commander came out does everybody remember <laughs> bridge commander yep and sitting there and being the captain and giving all the orders. And it was freaking awesome. The power. <laughs> I could just imagine if I had the setup I had now and get like the Ifinity display, big sound system. Oh, man, I'm speechless. Calm down. Speechless. Breathe. One, two. But I, I, I don't know for me if Elite Dangerous is, is where I need that. I think with the flight stick, I'll have enough uh, controls everywhere that I won't need it. So that's that's really cool, though. I, I think I might check it out. Um, and, uh, and he says one thing here that we were talking about, the marketplace. He says, in all versions of the game, open, group, or solo, the marketplace is the same so that you are still playing in the same universe as everyone else and can't game the system by making a fortune in solo that is closed to those in open. There you go. So, hmm. fantastic. Thanks, David. Much yeah, that's very cool. Thanks for the for the insight there. Hey, Lenor, you kind of rock. Do you know why you I rock? I rock because I can roll down a hill really fast in the middle of winter and make a big, huge snowball. Sure. Mostly I was thinking because you set up our Cafe Press page. Oh, yeah. That is awesome, and I am so happy with the uh, the discussions that have started now about stuff that people want uh, to see. We've got everything on there, and I wish Harry was still here because on there we do have the official. You can't get them anywhere else. Harry Hall was wrong. T-shirts available, uh, which includes the date uh, MMO Reporter episode one thirty six, the Harry Hall was wrong episode seven thirty one two thousand thirteen. So uh, that is available and in a wide variety of shirt styles. 
And there is a high five guaranteed for anyone who wears that to uh, PAX Prime next year. I'm just oh, saying. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. All sorts of types of t-shirts. Wow. You need to get like the um, the baby onesie. Lenore on those ones. <laughs> Hit the next uh, generation. Well, no, he needs he needs uh, something long and baggy enough so that when he's not wearing his pants, it's not so bad. True. So very very true. Yeah. I was actually thinking about putting that on a teddy bear. They have a small little teddy bear that you can get <laughs> that on. <laughs> I thought that was very fitting. Oh man. <laughs> um and uh, and what else do we have? We have all sorts of stuff. Uh, we we already we've sold stuff, which is absolutely outstanding. Oh, cool. Uh, first thing that sold was a Rift Reporter T-shirt. For one of our shows that we're not doing anymore. <laughs> to be fair, that's a that is an uh, awesome looking shirt. Yeah, yes, it, it is. Mm -hmm. It is. So um I really like that. So thank you, Lenor, for for doing that. Oh, it you are uh, welcome. looks and, fantastic. And hoping, to, hoping to add more shirts uh during this week. We we're throwing around a couple of ideas. Mm -hmm. Um Hoping to get a no pants one in there, some sort of joke with that, of course. Mm. Uh, Harry Hall has already uh, thought of uh, dock blocking. That wasn't Harry Hall. That was Fruin Juice. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, that was okay. Hey, yeah. You need uh, dock blocked, uh, of course, um, and some MMO reporter branded version of uh, keep. I can't keep calm. I'm tanking. Yeah. Those ones. <laughs> so that's cool to see our community. Uh, Doing that. <clears throat> it is late. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, so I'm really excited. Cafepress.com slash MMO Reporter. Go check it out. And, of course, our Patreon page, all our awesome patrons. We are so close to releasing our song. Uh, I really would love to get that done before the new year and let all of you see our fantastic song that we have, uh, we have made for all of you. We are uh, $22 away. That's it, $22. So go check it out. We've got a whole bunch of different pledge amounts. And if you, uh, hey, if you pledge $25 or more, I have got a closet full of stuff that I want to send to you. I've got oh. things like Marvel Heroes t-shirts. I've got a, um, uh, I've got a, a, a little Hell Crab from Defiance. I've got a whole bunch of stuff in there that I would love to send out to you. All the physical swag that we get from uh, game developers and uh, at PAX and stuff like that. So go check it out, patreon.com slash MMO reporter. And of course, go check out doghousesystems.com and use the coupon code MMO reporter to double your RAM because they're awesome. I love Doghouse. Love me some Doghouse. And Bill, if people want to get a hold of us, how can they do that? Well, they can head over to the website uh, at uh, www.mmoreporter.com. It's the central hub for MMO Reporter and all of our brother and sister podcasts. Uh, you can send us an email to mmo.reporter at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash MMO Reporter. You can tweet at any of the MMO Reporters, either at MMO underscore Reporter for Chris, at Harry Hall for Harry Hall, at Leonor for Leonor, or at MMO Bill for yours truly. You can give us a call at 616 666 or click the widget on the right side of the page over at www.mmoreporter.com. Send us a voicemail. Let us know what you think. Uh, we'd, we'd, we'd love to hear. We'd actually love to get some voice comments on flight sticks, on uh, the stuff that came out on BlizzCon, uh, especially around the discussion that we were having around uh, Titan and what its effect on Blizzard is now. I, I'd love to hear what, what you all think about that. Um, head on over to YouTube and uh, check out youtube.com slash user slash MMO Reporter Network for uh, video content from all of our PAX visits, uh, from uh, uh, Plus One Keyboard and other streaming stuff. Uh, you can check it out there. You have lots of fun YouTubing, all that kind of magic stuff, and no pigeons, not even one. Are you sure? Not even. Not even half of one. Good. Actually, half of one works even <laughs> worse than a full one, believe it, it or not. Surprisingly <laughs> does. Horrible, horrible things. Uh, Bill, thank you for a fantastic show. My pleasure. Leonor, it was, as always, a blast, uh, even though there was a sincere lack of pants. Yeah, well, I'm almost out of Cheetos, too. And Harry, thanks so much for being part of the show. You're welcome. 
That sounded weird. Well, it's Harry. <laughs> uh, and thanks to everyone in the chat room. We had actually a blast with everyone in there chatting it up. So thank you very much for coming to check us out on twitch.tv slash MMO reporter. Thanks to everyone who downloads the podcast week after week. We really appreciate it. We hope that you download the podcast again next week. But most importantly, we hope to see you in game. Don't, 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 don't forget about your ult you need to cherish. Each and every little character you've got, no matter what level they're at. Don't forget about your ults you need to cherish. Each and every little character you've got, no matter what level they're at. Don't forget about your ults. Well, that's a good show. Awesome. Right. Good. Anyway, oh, good, you're still there. Yeah, the, uh, there. yeah. Thanks for watching the video, everybody. Don't forget to check out all the other podcasts at mmoreporter.com or by clicking on any of the links here. And please check out our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash mmoreporter. Thanks, everyone, and see you in game.